Thanks to the supporters of channel member Ryan Duffy. The fight for survival is on, folks. There was a point between the last episode and this one where we were the form team in the Premier League. Then we lost. So we st we, there is still a lot of work to do. But it's looking more doable than it did before. Hello, welcome to Club 4, part 4 of non to Legend. I'm Kevin. Coming up on today's episode, we have two massively important home games for you. We're at home against two teams who are both below us, Stoke and Southampton. Since you were last with me, this is what has gone on. I've got a big bottle of water in my way, so I can't actually see. Let's move the water. And as you can see, we, uh, in the last episode, drew against Fulham, beat Brentford. We then rolled that into four more consecutive wins ridiculous wins i know we're playing against teams in the bottom half of the table but alban zanelli just woke up he scored in all four of those wins um he just went on the purple patch of all purple patches scoring six goals in four games after getting a little bit of criticism in the last episode for not being that impressive since signing it shows how poor he'd been before that after that run of games he's still only averaging a 6.95 for the season but he was phenomenal. And as we, after a season of really struggling to score goals, he just stepped up and started scoring the goals for us. No coincidence that he wasn't available for the Brighton game and we lost it. But yeah, just goals galore. And this is what the league table looks like off the back of it. We are, as it stands right now, outside of the relegation zone in 17th place. One point clear of Southampton, who we play at home in this episode and way clear of Stoke, who we play first. If we win both of these games, we'll be on 37 points with four games to go and probably above Watford as well and breathing down the neck of Leeds even, potentially. And I think two wins here and we're probably safe. But it's a big ask. Um, but Zanelli is back. So, you know, cross fingers and all that. Um, we've got Hoy and Hall in goal, a back four of Sessignon, Mateus, Noll and Wagyu. Zamorano at the base of the midfield, Walsh and Zanelli ahead of him, then De Luca in behind Alvarez and Casolare. It is basically the team that we've been using on this little run that we've been on. It has been working. It's been working against teams who've had much better seasons than Stoke and Southampton have. We've done the hard part now. We said that this running would be important. We've also identified that our final three games of the season are hard again. So really... We need to get to the 40-point safety target before we get into those final couple of games. If we want a penalty here, because this would be an incredible start to the game as we have the ref is wandering over the little telly. This could be the perfect start to this match if we can get a penalty inside the first couple of minutes of the game. And we... Come on, give, it, give us a penalty. Can we have... Can we have the penalty, referee? Come on now. You're not going to go all that way and not give a penalty, are you? Of course he's not. It is a penalty to Norwich. And Alvarez steps up to take with the opportunity to put us 1-0 up inside the first four minutes of this game. Alvarez's penalty is saved. I mean, that, that wasn't on the script for today. We were supposed to score there and go on and get another three or four goal victory. If Stoke are the team that ruined this for us, after there, I mean, I think they are mathematically already relegated, so they've got nothing to play for. It would be very sad if they are the ones who spoil our fun, but let's not read too much into one missed penalty. There is still plenty of time for us to go on and grab the goal or goals that we might need to win this football match. Stoker in here. We need to get a tackle in. Somebody get a tackle in. There's a last-ditch challenge there. I think that was Mateus getting the block in. Very important it was too, because that was an opportunity for Stoke, but we're now back up the other end of the pitch, albeit with Stoke in possession of the ball. I, I'm hoping this is going to be us winning the ball back for a little counter-attack and a goal, but it does seem to be a prolonged period of Stoke possession. Sessignon's been turned inside out there by the Stoke attacker, and they are coming down this left-hand side of ours, where obviously we do push our fullbacks forward to provide us the width in attack, and Hoy and Hal is there to make the save from the long range effort. But it is a corner for Stoke. And this is, after a after a very exciting first couple of minutes, turned into some good chance, chances for Stoke. But Hoy and Hal is there again to make the save. And hopefully, he's going to have another one of his days where he just looks like the best goalkeeper in history, which we know he can be from time to time. He did it against Manchester United earlier in the season. He did it against Bayern Munich in the Bundesliga last year 
We know he can have moments in big matches, and I just hope he sees this as a big match. Sessignon bursting through the area, cuts it back to Zanelli, who's got a chance to shoot. Zanelli's in again. It's seven goals in five games for Alban Zanelli, the man who is single-handedly trying to keep Norwich in the Premier League. He's scoring almost all of our goals, and he just looks like a proper world beater. Now we've figured out how to use him. We were initially using him as the attacking midfielder in this system. In this little run, he's been playing as the Mazala from central midfield, and that switch in position to have him playing in the Mazala role has led to him just going absolutely bananas when it comes to goal scoring. It's 1-0 to Norwich, and that is huge for us. We haven't looked at what it does to the league table just yet. But if we can grab another goal here before half time, that's going to make the league table look even better. Casolari plays it back to Sessignon. Cross comes in. De Luca is there. It's back off the crossbar. De Luca for a second time. It's with Casolari, and we cannot apply the finish. And it's it's the story of the season over and over and over again. We get these chances and just can't convert them. And that was another example of it there. We need like 10 Zanellis. There he is. I mean, there he is. Look, the man himself, Zanelli, making the tackle now. Casolari playing it into Alvarez, who's got the chance to shoot and he scores. We're all looking over at the linesman just in case there's any suspicion of offside. I don't think there is. And after having his penalty saved right at the start of the game, he's redeemed himself with a very tidy finish and a beautiful pass. Who was this pass? Was this Casolari? What a pass this was because it's just past the defender but perfectly weighted for Alvarez, who's hovering between the two Stoke defenders to make it 2-0 to us. And we should be cruising now. And as it stands, as you can see, we've actually jumped above Watford currently up into 16th place, a four-point gap now between us and Southampton. So if we can then go and beat them in the second match in this episode, assuming this does end with a victory for us. So let's not count our chickens before they're hatched. But if we can hold on to this victory here, and then beat Southampton here as well. We'll be seven points clear with four games to go. You've got to believe that's enough. There's, there, it would be unusual for a team in the relegation zone at that stage of the season to go out and get eight points in their final four games. We certainly wouldn't want to be in Southampton's position if that's what it comes to. But of course, it is still in their hands to an extent they can beat us and make things very interesting going into those final few games where we still have to play Leicester, West Ham and Tottenham with some pretty pretty challenging matches. We've crumbled against good opposition all season long, apart from that one game against Manchester United. Um, we could do without any more crumbling. That's a lovely finish from Casolari. Only his third goal for us, but he's not actually played that many games and he is he is starting to find his way into this role alongside Alvarez. I've not really used a lot of two-man strike partnerships in FM22, but this this partnership between these two seems to be working really well. Zanelli's obviously doing great things from midfield behind them. We don't really have an attacking midfielder. De Luca's playing there at the moment, but really he's a striker as well. And we've got an idea of a an attacking midfielder we want to bring in in the, in the summer, but it does rely on us staying in the Premier League. So fingers crossed we're able to do that. And... Um, I mean, I don't, I don't want to get too far ahead of myself and start planning next season's transfers already, but I think we believe at this point we're staying in the Premier League. I mean, are you watching Schalke? This is what you could have had. You know, it doesn't matter if you have a bad start. It doesn't matter. We, there's been several times here at Norwich I've lost five games in a row, which was enough to get me sacked at Schalke. We can turn it around. Here's your proof we can turn it around. We'd have turned it around there too. And I still maintain I'd have got to the Champions League within five years if I'd have stayed at Schalke. Um, we should probably focus back in on this match, though, because Stoke have actually got a goal back here. Still more than half an hour to go. It's Norwich 3, Stoke 1. We've been caught napping a little bit here. That good old-fashioned high defensive line, you know, I love so much, is always going to be susceptible to that little dinked ball over the top. I do sometimes wonder if I should be playing Hoy and Hal on a support instruction, so he he fills that gap a little bit more. We don't have a covering defender or a goalkeeper who's filling in that gap, and we do sometimes have this bit of no man's land there. Hoyenhal's probably capable of doing it, but I kind of want him to focus at the moment on just making saves. And if we can see the odd goal like that, then so be it. But it's something to think about, whether we go and find ourselves a covering defender or get him playing a little bit further forward than he is at the moment. But I think as a, as a team, 
very much in a relegation battle. Let's just focus on our goalkeeper making saves rather than playing as an extra defender for us right now. Um, right, we've got some tired legs out there. We are going to bring on uh, Diallo. We will push Sinelli forward for the last few minutes of this game. Um, just really because we don't have anyone else who can fill that role. Although Zanelli is less effective there. He's done his work today. He's got his goal. Now we just need to keep our shape and uh, not mess this up. With eight minutes left on the clock, Mateus is there with a very strong challenge. Um, but Stoker in again here and Hoyenhal is there to make the save. What a difference he's been. Of all the signings we've made, yeah, Zanelli has been scoring the goals. I think there's a strong argument that Hoyenhal... Is has probably been the most important signing we've had here at Norwich. We were we were leaking goals like nobody's business before he came along. We are much more solid at the back now. Yeah, we've got two new centre backs in front of him as well. But Hoy and Hal, I think for the second season in a row, there's an argument for making him signing of the season at two different clubs. But that is a huge win. Just do do that once more, and we're as good as safe. The job isn't completely done. But it's most of the way there if we can do that to Southampton as well. Well, I'll level with you, boys and girls. It's been about four hours of real time since I picked this team. The phone rang and <laughs> I, I went off and did other stuff. I don't think I've made any changes from the last game. This looks like the kind of team I would pick. Um, so let's go play Southampton. Such an important game. A win and we're effectively safe. So let's go win it, shall we? Come on. Oh, let's... Get some, get some excitement. I, I, I try to avoid shouting too much in YouTube videos. We save that kind of nonsense for Twitch. But uh, sometimes, the, sometimes it really, really matters. And today is one of those days. Um, Southampton, bless them, were, uh, forget bless them. I was going to say nice things about them and how it's a bit harsh. We've dragged them into this. But less than two minutes on the clock and they've scored against us. And they're dragging us right back into this mess. I was... I'd kind of assumed it was a foregone... What is going on with my hair? It was a foregone conclusion that we were just going to beat them and we were going to be safe. The only problem is, you know how superstitious I am with some of the stuff in Football Manager? I mentioned I'd been away from the screen for like four hours. I didn't close the game. I've just been sat there on the tactic screen for the last four hours while I've been away from the computer. So perhaps Football Manager's like, oh, well... You know, if you're just going to ignore us and leave us to it, we'll show you. And here I am getting punished for doing exactly that because we've given away a penalty after 15 minutes. We can blame it all on me leaving. I'm neglecting the game and it's punishing me for it. This is not good at all. Um, it's a penalty against us. We need Hoy and Hal to be a hero one more time for us this season, save this penalty and inspire the comeback. And he doesn't. And all of a sudden... We're 2-0 down early on in this must-win game and we're starting to look ahead at the upcoming fixtures really quite nervously because obviously Southampton are the team chasing us. We're going to shout some encouragement. Possibly demanding more would have been the play there, but we'll shout some encouragement for now. And um, four games left after this, I think. And three of them are really difficult matches. De Luca to, Zan to Zanelli. We know how important he's been to us um, in this in this little bit of running. Sessignon's in a lot of space here. Sessignon, if he can find the cross, he cuts it back to Casolari, but um, his, uh, his header, he can't keep it down. And we don't want to be doing any of this missing our chances nonsense today. Today's not the day for that. We need to score three goals at least from here. Wagyu on the right-hand side, looking for the cross. Casolari's there again, and Alvarez, has he managed to stay on side? I think, I think he might have done, maybe. He has? Has he? I hope he has. Oh, my goodness. I miss being able to tell by looking at the linesman. Not that we could even see the linesman there. This is good work from Wagyu on the right-hand side. We've got two very good attacking fullbacks that were here when we arrived. There was no question of him being offside. He was well onside. And Alvarez has um, has got us back into this game. Let's offer a little bit more encouragement. If we can find an equaliser before half-time, I'd like to think that knocks the stuffing out of Southampton, who started so well... Would, would have thought that that was the job mostly done. And if we can rob them of that feeling while they suck on their orange segments, that would be ideal. We haven't been able to do that. But we are only a goal down. It is all to play for. I am wondering at what point we bring the wide men on and change the system and stick some, stick some balls out wide and, and try and get round the back of them that way. 
Um, Mateus forward to De Luca and now Zamorano to Alvarez. Casolari out to Wagyu, who is excellent for the goal. And Walsh playing it into Alvarez. This is lovely football. Zanelli, I thought he was going to shoot there. Sessignon's in space. He's actually tested the goalkeeper, which is weird because it was a very tame shot. But Wagyu's got the opportunity to keep the move going. And now it's with Walsh. Asa Walsh with the shot. But Alvarez has won it back. Alvarez closing down again, but he can't quite get the shot away. And Wagyu now getting in behind again for Casolari. Once again, can't head it goalwards. And Sessignon... We have another opportunity to just keep the move going. We are now going to demand more. And I think it's a difficult one because we are playing well now. Ever since the shock of the goals, we have played well, but we need to score. So we've got to change something. And um, the obvious thing is to get the wingers on. So I think we probably push Samarano forward. We get these two. I mean, I wonder, do we put De Luca up front? and try something different to Casolari. I think we're going to do that. Just trying something a little bit different. Where on earth is Fernandez? I mean, this doesn't work if he's not... That's not ideal. That's really not ideal. Um, Right, we changed the plan again then. Because the plan was kind of get him on. He's not there. <laughs> um, Right, we'll go attacking. We'll stick with this system. We'll show some faith in this system. Um, right, we're going to put Zanelli further forward. And Zamorano is going to go there. And we're going to bring on Haruna there. This is a midfield shape we've done quite a few times now. Haruna was actually our only player on the next-gen Wonder Kid list. And Zamorano is pretty good in a more attacking role. Zanelli is shattered, though. So all of that faffing about, I'm probably going to take Zanelli off anyway. I wonder if I'm going to... Right, Kev, are you going to stick? Are you sticking an extra man up front? feel like he might be. We might be going to wide men after all. We might be... After all that... I kind of want to get Aurelio on. Not that he's done anything to suggest he should be on in this situation. But I think we are going to get him on and do this. So we'll just drop him back ever so slightly. He's going to be a winger on there. He's going to be an inverted winger on that side. He's going to be the attacking one. We'll drop him back slightly, even though he has been very effective. In fact, Sessignon's tired, so perhaps we'll drop him back. Push Wagyu going beyond the guy who's going to be the inverted bringer and cutting inside. And then Aurelio can push forward a little bit further on this side. And let's do this. Let's demand more. And let's hope that the universe sides we're worth a goal I'll take the draw at this point because that at least keeps a nice gap between us and Southampton I don't want this one point gap that losing to them creates they're in here and luckily the shot goes a little bit wide I like the fact that you're, you're trying to keep it interesting football manager but I'd, I'd just take an easy run in at this point we don't need it to be interesting thanks um, very attacking and then I guess we're just going to have to try and go a little bit wider maybe and get the ball out wide and get some crosses into the box. Get a bit more direct. Just change things. You've got to change something at this stage. Right. Alvarez playing it out to Moore, who's not really a winger, but he is playing out wide for us today. Wagyu, who has been excellent. Lovely cross from Castellari. Oh, it's a, is it a save? It is a save. It's, he's offside anyway. Oh, that felt like a moment right there. Oh, and again, I mean, we've been, we've played really well. It's ever so frustrating that this has happened. But we have been dragged right back in to this nonsense that's going on at the bottom of the table. It would be heartbreaking if after all the hard work we've done to get ourselves close to being out of danger, we got dragged back in. The one good thing... I guess, is that we have done a lot of positive work to our goal difference. So we've got a much better goal difference than Watford, who are level on points with us. It's really going to be... It's Stoke and Brentford are already gone, and it's going to be one from these three, us, Watford, and Southampton. And Southampton, you would think, have got a morale advantage now. Oh, my word, we play Watford next. I guess this just became a three-match episode. Right, no changes for the Watford game. And this is the team that has given us a chance. So we have to give them a chance. The only change is Fernando, not Fernandez. Fernando is fit enough to be back up onto the bench. So um, he missed out um, with injury from the bench in the last time. See, look, I did check. Just, 
I guess, guess, I guess I forgot during my four hour break. We've had a four minute break this time though, so no excuses. Hopefully, Football Manager rewards me for my loyalty and lets us let's just stay in the Premier League. Because if we lose to Watford here, I think we're probably gone. Just like a win over Southampton, I thought we were probably going to be safe, knowing who we've got in our final three games. Leicester aren't necessarily a great Leicester team, um, but we've also got to play Tottenham and West Ham, who are both vying for European qualification spots. We're not getting anything out of either of those. We need we need to win here. There's... I mean, I mean, there's there's no way to sugarcoat it. This is must win. Even though it's away from home, losing against Southampton at home has made this into a must win. We could have probably got away with a draw here before. Not anymore. And Alvarez is in and there's an early goal. And that is massive. Alvarez really has turned up in this final third of the season. This switch of the role to play him as the slightly deeper striker, weirdly, has led to him starting to score goals. I don't understand the logic behind it, but... I'm happy that it's working, so I'll just let it continue working. Watford nil, Norwich won, and that is uh, that is a big difference maker in this relegation battle. And now we've got the chance to break on them again. Casolare is breaking forward, and we've got plenty of men in the middle. Casolare cuts inside, plays it into Zanelli. De Luca bursts into the penalty area. Sessignon in the crossing position, floats it over to Casolare, and he scores! And we've made it two! The ref's got his finger in his ear. Hopefully he's just got like a a bit of wax in there and he's not talking to it. You don't need to talk to anybody, ref. Just let the goal stand. It's fine. And uh, we are going to the VAR though. And I think, it, has it been given? The fact we're getting a replay and it says goal suggests it's been given. Excellent stuff. Normally you get some kind of message to confirm it, but there you go. Watford nil, Norwich two. And look at the difference it makes. Once again, at the bottom of this table, Southampton are playing West Ham. We could really do with West Ham Beating them there, that would be ideal. But a three-point gap with three games to go and a much better goal difference than the team chasing us. Yes, we'll take that. And DeLuca makes it three, his fifth of the season. Another one who now we've switched his position around a little bit is finally starting to discover some form. Maybe he was always an attacking midfielder and it was playing him as a striker and playing him out wide that was making him look entirely useless. But at three nil up... I can start to, I'm not going to relax, but I do feel a little bit better about what happened against Southampton, especially because I think West Ham have gone ahead against Southampton. So after all that, as it currently stands, the gap between Southampton and us is now four points again. If I mean, if we'd have beaten them, we'd, we'd be mathematically safe, would we? I don't even know. Southampton have equalised anyway, so it's not even going to come up. It's fine. Look at what we're doing compared to that XG. The Watford goalkeeper must be having an absolute nightmare. Um, luckily, the game has been very quiet in this second half as well. Luckily, both in terms of we want the uh, we want the win, we don't want anything else to happen now. Thanks, but also in the interest of keeping the episode to a reasonable length, we're just getting on with it, nice and quick. Lovely, lovely stuff. Right, Diallo is going to come on. We'll push Walsh into a slightly more attacking position in midfield. Casolari heads clear. He's starting to look like a proper footballer as well. It's all coming together. Our front three have all scored in this match. The team that couldn't buy a goal. We were relying on a central midfielder to score all our goals. All of a sudden, our attackers have learned how to score. And luckily, we're getting a little bit of luck as well. Watford hitting the post. Wagyu is there to clear it. And it remains 3-0, 20 minutes to go. And um, we'll just take the final whistle now, please, ref. It's fine. We're, we're pretty comfortable with how things are going. Although, we'd be even more comfortable if West Ham could grab another goal against Southampton. I mean, it is a free kick here for Watford and Hoy and Hal is there again. What a signing. Twice over. What a signing. He's, he's going to take some beating for his combined signings. He's going to be signing of the series. Never mind signing of the season. What a difference maker he has been in two different teams, in two different countries, in two consecutive seasons. Lovely save from Hoy and Hal. And now Alvarez with the free kick, floating it into there. It's back with Alvarez again, who floats it back over again. Mateus with the chance for a shot. De Luca's following in, and it goes just over. Eight minutes left. Watford aren't getting back into this from here, surely. I think Watford, ha I think West Ham have scored again against West uh, against Southampton. In fact, Southampton won, West Ham three. Uh, you got to feel a little bit for Southampton, but I don't. I just want us to stay in the Premier League. Sessignon with the cross. But it's headed clear 
but it doesn't matter. There's a minute and a half left in this game. They're not going to score three times. Sessignon slotting it through to Asa Walsh, who could have put the cherry on top, but his shot was saved, and it ends 3-0 to Norwich. I'm very glad I extended the episode. The loyalty we showed to Football Manager has been repaid. We're not mathematically safe. We are obviously going to come back to show you the final couple of games. I'll play Leicester off camera just because I don't want to do back-to-back really long episodes. Um, but we have still got to play. Um, I think it's West Ham, then Tottenham. Um, so next weekend, we play Leicester. I'll do that one off camera. Then we'll be back for West Ham at home and Tottenham away. While that is going on, um, Southampton are at home against Liverpool and then don't play. And then away against Manchester United. Oh, wow. Southampton have got, and they're away against Tottenham. Southampton are gone. I just don't see, Southampton need a miracle at this point. They thought they had it when they beat us. I think Southampton are gone. Watford, uh, where are Watford? Watford are away against Arsenal. They are at home against Leicester. And not there? Oh, at home against Fulham. So Watford have got probably the easiest run in of the three. Maybe probably equivalent to ours. Southampton are gone. They've got they've got less points than either of us. They've got a nightmare of a run in. Brentford are trying to show signs of life, but I don't think they're likely to be involved. I think Southampton are probably going to be gone, but we'll find out for sure tomorrow. If you've enjoyed that, please make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on there for me. Subscribe to the channel for daily Football Manager videos. And thank you very much for watching.